We're back. You know, the word is out that Obamacare, the healthcare.gov website's fixed. Oh, really? Well, let me tell you what the let me tell you what the the people who know about websites tell you. The high exposure of personal information on the federal Obamacare online exchange could take more than a year to secure and lock down. David Kennedy, he's a white hat hacker. What that means for those of you who are not initiated into web development and hacking and all the rest of that is a white hat hacker is someone who goes out there and when a company builds a website, they try to break in. Their security, but from the positive side of things. And they try to violate it and test the online security. They try to breach the gates. He testified directly to Capitol Hill in a hearing. And here's what he had to say. When you develop a website, you develop it with security in mind from the very start. And it doesn't appear to have happened this time. It's really hard to go back and fix security around it because security wasn't built into it. We're talking multiple months to over a year to at least address some of the critical to high exposures on the website itself directly. Now, the Department of Health and Human Services says, hey, the privacy and security of consumers' personal information is a top priority to us. Security testing happens on an ongoing basis, using industry best practices to appropriately safeguard consumers' personal information. Is that so? No, that is another propagandic lie. How do we know that? Because they hadn't even tested the security 48 hours before the website went online. Kennedy actually came out and said the vulnerabilities are so bad that they range from, quote, everyone, everything from hacking someone's computer so that when you visit the website, it actually tries to hack your computer back all the way to being able to extract email addresses, usernames, first name, last name, the location of where you are. I'm telling you that Obamacare is not a health insurance program. It's a United States citizen registration system where you are voluntarily submitting all of your data. You know what you're doing? You are giving up all of your information to the government voluntarily. Here's what their own health care privacy policy says. When you browse through any website, certain information about your visit can be collected. We automatically collect and temporarily store the following types of information. The domain where you access the, inf- the Internet from. The IP address, which is attached to your computer. The operating system on your computer. The date and the time of your visit. The pages you visited. And the address of the website that connected you to healthcare.gov, like Google or Bing or whatever. But here's the real problem. When you submit your personal information, you give them the following. Legal authorization to collect information about you. You also give them the opportunity to share that information with any agency that they so choose. In fact, when you actually do get through and you can finally build an account and register, you're required to click on a button that says, I agree. And the truth of the matter is what you're agreeing to is the dissemination of your most private information to you don't even know who because they couch who 
behind the list of other. Any other agency we deem appropriate. Do you trust them? Really? Well, then let me ask you this. If you trust them so much, why is it that the United States, the IRS, is investigating people on the basis of whether or not they are an enemy of the particular administration that's in charge. No, this administration isn't the first to do that. They're one of many, many, many to do that. But these guys have taken it to a whole new level. And the truth is, they don't even care if you know. This guy who was a cancer patient, he came out, he's in fourth stage cancer. That's the last stage. There is nothing above fourth. The only thing above fourth is pine box. He's in the fourth stage of cancer. He publicly discussed the cancellation of his insurance under Obamacare because he was, quote, and he was canceled because he was, quote, beyond the catastrophic previous condition stage. Well, I thought the whole idea was to cover those people who had pre-existing conditions. But he was beyond the catastrophic precondition, pre-existing condition stage. Well, when the press got a hold of that, they went to the insurance company who turned around and said, no, 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 that's not what we meant. We were, we're going to give him coverage, don't worry. And they did. But they told him, now it's going to cost you not $161 a month, but 1500 So he said, well, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm already in fourth stage, and I'm going to let nature take its course because I can't afford $1,500 a month, and I refuse to burden my family with that to add a $1,360 a month bill to an already tight budget. So he went to his doctor last week, and he found out he's in full remission. That's the good news. I'm getting better, he says. The truth is that he found out he's in full remission, and he's got four more months to go. In other words, four months before he gets checked out every, again, because he gets checked every four months. And right now, he's in what's called remission. But on Monday, he got a certified letter. Lo and behold, it's from the IRS. They're auditing him for the tax year of 2009. You know why? Because he raised his head and spoke out. So I ask you, do you remember when Thomas Jefferson said to us, when the people fear their government, there is tyranny. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. Single acts of tyranny can be ascribed to the accidental opinion of the day. But a series of oppressions, begun at a very distinguished period and pursued unalterably through every change of ministers, to plainly prove a deliberate, systematic plan of reducing us to slavery. See, the truth is that we don't see single acts of tyranny. I mean, the occasional one could be thought of as, well, it was a mistake. It was the accidental opinion of the day. 
prohibition was a bad idea. We overrode it. We changed it. We got rid of that constitutional amendment. We repealed it. But what we have going on, ladies and gentlemen, right now is a series of oppressions begun at a very distinguished period around 1900, pursued unalterably through every change of ministers, presidents, Congress, and the courts. And it plainly proves a deliberate, systemic plan of reducing us to slavery. The information that you submit to Obamacare is being compiled into a dossier. The information that the NSA captures from you, if you do any kind of international communication or even domestic, is added to that dossier. That which the NSA is prohibited from legally by accessing here in the United States domestically because of the law, the FBI is giving for them, is getting for them. And the FBI has a direct pipe. So they have the legal right because they have domestic access. And they're capturing everything the NSA can't get. And then they have a direct straight pipe from FBI headquarters right over to Fort Meade. You see, the problem here, ladies and gentlemen, is that we are, at this point, allowing our government to become the tyrannical dictator that we fear. And we're giving them the ammunition they need. Meanwhile, there's a guy who goes over to the Mall of America, the biggest mall in the world, and he's had a really rough year in business. And I think he had a divorce. And the guy went up to the top tier in the mall. And as a gesture of goodwill, he took a $1,000 in single $1 bills. And he tossed it over the railing. And he yelled, Merry Christmas. It's an expression of generosity. It was an expression and a gesture of goodwill. But they arrested him because he might have caused an injury. He might have caused an injury. He didn't, actually. No injury was incurred. People scrambled and ran and raced to collect up those dollars. <clears throat> Chasing debt. But he was arrested because he might have caused an injury. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, your government is growing record amounts of dope in Afghanistan. Selling guns to the Mexican cartels, which have killed Americans and untold numbers of Mexicans all in an attempt to foster a feeling in America that we need to get rid of those pesky weapons. They're kicking cancer patients off their health insurance. They're shredding the Constitution, passing an illegal act that mandates that you give up your Fourth Amendment right to privacy and your Fifth Amendment right against in self-incrimination. They've left millions bereft with no insurance. And on January 1st, how many people that are embroiled in a personal health issue will pay the price? They're giving military equipment to local police departments like it's pouring out of a fire hose. They're lying, they're cheating, they're stealing. They're murdering 
Americans overseas with drones. And it won't be long before they're murdering Americans domestically. In fact, I believe that they already have. And if you don't believe your government is capable of that, you're far more naive than you should be. They're destroying our nation domestically and internationally. They're raising inflation. There's no inflation, they tell you, because they took fuel, energy, and food out of the equation. Well, isn't that interesting? Because those are the three things that Americans spend the most amount of money on. Short of a fixed price for their mortgage or their rent or whatever, when you talk about consumable goods, food, energy, and gasoline are the three biggest expenses for the average American. But if you take that out of the equation, the sum at the end will change. And so there's no inflation. When was the last time you looked at chicken in the store? When was the last time you went to the store and bought some food and bought bread that used to be $1.29 a loaf and is now three fifty nine? When was the last time you stopped at the pump and you paid $3.86 a gallon? They're causing deflation while simultaneously causing inflation on you. The deflation is related to our overall economy. They're blowing up the dollar. They're pissing off our allies by spying on them, betraying them in these crazy negotiations with terrorists, Hezbollah, Iran. Signing agreements with President Karzai of Afghanistan that says that if a terrorist shoots at you and then runs inside, he's Ali Ali oxen free. And you can't touch him. You're not allowed to go through the door to pursue him. And that will translate into accessory to murder of our soldiers in Afghanistan. They're spying on you and building these tyrannical dossiers that would make somebody like Stalin and Hitler and Mussolini and Pol Pot and Mao smile like the Joker. They're taxing you into poverty. The EPA is out there planning new rules and new oppressions for you every single day. They're drying up the lead supply. They're out there trying to take control of all water, including that dry creek bed that runs behind your house and that pond that's out there on your farm. They're stealing your land. Yes, the land you paid for. Yeah, right. That's the one that you have to pay tax on every year just to continue to own. They dominate every aspect of your life. And they're doing their damnedest to take away your guns. But let's not give away any money here. Let's not throw a thousand bucks off the tier and spread a little holiday cheer, shall we? Because somebody might get hurt in the scuffle to pick up a few pieces of paper dead. The banks are out. <laughs> the Fed has passed rules that says that even your one-off small-town bank has to meet the same requirements as Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, the too-big-to-fail banks. Yeah, the ones that didn't fail because you bailed them out. with a couple of trillion dollars. 
No, it wasn't $875 billion. Don't be fooled for a minute. The same banks that own the Federal Reserve are the same banks that the government stepped in and bailed out with taxpayer money leading to the $17 trillion in debt that we can never pay off. And they're the holders of $300 trillion in derivatives that are as toxic as poison. And you're on the hook for all of it. Still think we live in a free market nation? Still think we have freedom and liberty? Well, I'm sorry to burst your bubble. It's really a police state under fascism. And you are food and livestock for the elite to be bought and sold and traded like a commodity. To be culled when you're no longer useful. The Air Force has a story out this morning where they're utilizing snitches within the academy to catch other people and then when word gets out You know what they say? We don't know who he is. We don't know what you're talking about. The Colorado Springs Gazette has has a story out there. Eric Thomas. He was put out there by the Air Force's Office of Special Investigations. He set up drug purchases, followed around suspected rapists, and fed information back to the Air Force brass at their request. In fact, not at their request. They intimidated him into doing so. And he was successful. They got 15 convictions for drugs. Two convictions of sexual sexual assault. But he got into a fight with one of the people that he was ratting on when he was trying to stop the guy from assaulting someone sexually. And you know what the OSI said, the Office of Special Investigations for the Air Force? He was disavowed. We don't know who he is. We don't know what you're talking about. The result was he got kicked out of the academy. And he's not the only one. Now that they have, now that the word is broken, he was told, well, you're the only one. Turns out there were four others who ultimately found out by getting together and talking about it that they were each told the same thing. The top, the top brass over there says, hey, we don't know nothing about this. And yet, The newspaper has been able to, through a series of uh, phone and text records, court filings and documents obtained through the Freedom of Information Act, prove that it's a lie. They did know. You see, what's happening, ladies and gentlemen, is this is a perfect example of what happens when your government needs to make you into a snitch. And they don't have a problem using you up and then burning you down. And if they don't have a problem doing that with a military cadet in the Air Force Academy, what makes you think they're going to have a problem doing it to you? It's the federal way. Trust me, I've been there. I've done that. I've read the book. I watched the movie. I lived the terror. And I refused to to capitulate. I paid the price. I never even got the T-shirt. The truth is, we have allowed our nation to descend into lawlessness. Obamacare is the cancer that's going to eat away at the rest of America. But it's only one facet 
of a multifaceted diamond, and it's huge. We'll be back in just a moment. We're going to look at how Afghanistan has turned into the poppy capital of the world.